On May 25th, 1968, the body of four-year-old Martin Brown was found dead from asphyxiation in an abandoned home in a rough neighbourhood of Newcastle. There were no suspects to be found. Two months later, another toddler was found asphyxiated on Newcastle Waste Ground. This time, it was three-year-old Brian Howe. He had been strangled and mutilated, with an M carved into his chest and his penis cut off. The police knew they had a serial killer on their hands and launched a large-scale investigation that involved interviewing 1,200 children. Two of the children interviewed were of interest to the police due to the answers they gave being suspicious. The two girls were 11 and 13-year-old Mary Bell and Norma Bell, who, although they shared a surname, were unrelated beyond friendship. The girls eventually broke down during interrogation and turned on each other, both claiming that the other had squeezed the child's neck until they had stopped moving. Mary claimed that Norma had made the cuts to the body, although she herself was later tried for this. On August the 5th, 1968, both girls were put under arrest. Mary's response to this was, that's alright by me. During the trial, both girls reacted very differently to the proceedings. Norma appeared overwhelmed and confused, whereas Mary was extremely confident and self-possessed. After nine days of evidence, Norma was found not guilty, whereas Mary was found guilty of killing the boys. However, due to her young age, it was impossible for her to be tried for murder in Britain, and was thus sentenced to life for manslaughter. She spent eight years in a Young Offenders Institute, followed by four years in an open prison, before being released with a new identity in 1980. Mary Bell became the first person in British history to be awarded a lifetime anonymity order. This meant that she was provided with a new name and a life away from the public eye. The order was also given to her daughter to allow her a peaceful life. Mary moved to the USA, settled down with her husband and had children. Outside of the release of her tell-all book in 1998, she's managed to stay out of the public eye. The question remains, what leads an 11-year-old child to commit two murders? While it's impossible to ever say for sure, if we look at Mary's upbringing, we can begin to see some contributing factors. Mary Bell was born in 1957 to mentally unstable 17-year-old prostitute, Betty Bell. Betty took an instant disliking to her daughter and began abusing the child from a very early age. There were at least several attempts on Mary's life at her mother's hands. One attempt involved Mary managing to get hold of a container of bleach and another where Mary took an overdose of sleeping pills as a toddler. Betty Bell claimed that it was purely an accident, however an eyewitness claims to have seen her giving Mary the tablets as sweets. The most vindictive murder attempt came when Betty Bell pushed her daughter from a window. Mary suffered severe head trauma during the fall and sustained brain damage to her prefrontal cortex, the area of the brain used in voluntary movements and decision making. Mary has also claimed that from the age of four, her mother would pimp her out to clients to engage in sexual acts with them. All of these factors have to have played a role in shaping Mary Bell into who she was to become. While it's never okay to provide someone with an excuse for a crime, especially not for the murder of children, it is important to look at where the criminal came from and what may have led them down the path, in the hopes of preventing a similar tragedy happening in the future.